Hey yo, salute to all my subscribers and a special shout out to everybody else passing through. YouTube, what's good? All right, so <clears throat> this blog I'm about to do, pretty serious blog. Um, actually, for the past, I would say, easily for the past 25 years of my life. Um, 20 years. I would say for the past 20 years of my life, I've been having this conversation with people on and off, male and female, um, from all different races and backgrounds, and even from the same race, but from different cultures, um, different countries. Um, and the answers and the different responses I get have always been and continue to be pretty interesting. Um, and for the past 48 hours, I've sat with the idea of having to do this blog and wanting to take it seriously. And no matter which way I try to approach it in my mind, it all comes back to this is really a 50-50 responsibility, 50-50 blame scenario that we find ourselves in in 2018. So what is it that I'm talking about? Well, <clears throat> y'all know, first of all, as I reiterate, that this platform is not about me. This platform is not for me. This platform was created by me with the intention of bridging the gap between A gender, uh, male and female relationship issues, um, social issues, um, the differences in any kind of views, political, religious, or otherwise. And so, what I noticed is I don't even have to build this channel as being for or about anything other than relationships because when you start to deep dive into relationships, naturally, you get into politics, you get into race, you get into uh, ethnicity, you get into um, religion, spirituality, you get into gender uh, inequalities, you get into double standards, you get into all these different things because it's funny but it seems that for the most part, when it comes to our relationships, everything else that we deal with as a society seems to go out the window. Because in, in, in those few brief moments in time, could be a few weeks, could be a few months, but when you meet a new person you're into, you forget about all those things. And that is until you reach a point in your relationship or something happens in the relationship or you seek, or even if you get unsolicited feedback from other people, whether they're close to you or strange or foreign to you, that's when all of those different views in the world, the things that separate us, the things that pull us to opposite ends of the spectrum, that's when those things show up. And what I continue to notice is that no matter how hard we try, men and women continue to be on the opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to this issue that I'm about to get into. <clears throat> so about two days ago, I received an email. And that email came from one of my subscribers. And they wanted me to go in about an issue that has been plaguing relationships, dating. For as far back as even I can remember and before that, because I'm sure that this issue really doesn't have an age. It's probably been going on since the beginning of time. I'm going to read the email that this person sent me, and then we're going to try, I'm going to try my best to get into some of the different things that I have heard as far as feedback from people. And then after that, I'm going to give my opinion. Now, we'll issue a disclaimer for this video, just like I do for a lot of the other videos that have sensitive topics such as this one. 
And that disclaimer is going to be simply this. Unless I say it is my personal opinion, and unless I say I believe or I feel or I think, anything that you hear me say in this blog, with the exception of being prefaced by those prior mentioned things that I just said, then the views that I'm talking about and the opinions that I'm sharing are not my own. I want to say that because <clears throat> I want I don't want there to be any confusion about my impartiality to this subject matter. I take it very seriously, and I don't want to offend anyone. But at the same time, we're all, we're all entitled to our views, and we're all entitled to our ideals and how we see ourselves and how we see the world around us. Nothing that I'm going to talk about to, uh, in this blog has a direct correlation to race, but some of the points that I will use to draw certain points at certain points in time in this blog will be related and will be uh, necessary in order for me to draw a, a, a connection between some of the points that I've heard made towards me and some of the points that I'm going to have to make. So bear with me and understand too that this channel is not here for us to necessarily be in agreement about everything but it's just here for us to have honest conversation. So having said that, let's get into it. So this email that I received, um, I'm going to read just what the email actually says. It is a request for me to do a blog, with a certain subject matter in mind. Email starts off, oh, by the way, before I get into this, the person that sent me this email sent this email because um, their request was pretty long and they didn't want to put it in the comments. Now, I'll remind everyone, whoever's watching this video, whoever is subscribed or not subscribed, my email, straight talk, all spelled out, straight talk315 at gmail.com, is the email address that you would want to email if you have an opinion about a video that you saw on this channel or even a podcast episode that you heard either on my a playlist for my podcast or if you actually follow my podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify, which is life relationships and everything in between. Now, this email address you can send if you have an opinion, you want to agree or disagree about something, but you want me to specifically address either something that you've seen or you want me to, to address a topic that you've maybe talked about in your circles and you want to see me address it on this channel or if you want to hit me up and request to do a blog with me, be featured in one of my blogs, or you know, maybe you have an idea of a different type of series that I can start, anything that you want to convey to me having to do with this channel that you don't necessarily want to put in the comments, either because it's too long or either because it's just not strictly a comment about that particular content that you're viewing at the time that you decided to reach out to me. Um, you can do that. Straight talk 315 at Gmail. Um, so I'm going to read this email. It says, hey, Kev. Okay, straight to it. Why do our black kings treat black queens so bad? This is not personal, Kev. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So with that being said, I'm from the hood. And why do our men treat us this way? No respect, no protection, no affection, nothing. Uh, but dogging us out. This shit's already heavy. It says, you know how to get... Uh, <laughs> All right, so as I read this email, I'm, I'm reading this email through the eyes and the ears and the mouth and the heart of this person who typed it. All right, so if anything, any verbiage that I use may or may offend you, you probably shouldn't be on this channel anyway um, because there's really not much in the way of filters here. So listen at your own discretion to this, the, the rest of this blog. So I'm going to start over. So it says, hey, Kev. Okay, straight to it. Why do our black uh, kings treat us black queens so bad? This is not personal, Kev. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So with that being said, I'm from the hood. And why do our men treat us this way? No respect, no protection, no affection, nothing but dogging us out. You know how to get rid of a nigga? 
have his kid. That's powerful and unfortunate. Um, it says, I'm sick of how us queens are treated by the ones that are supposed to protect us. It's sad and fucked up. We should be able to marry the guys we grew up with, meaning from our communities, because we and only we know how, we and only we know our struggle. But guess what? Our men hate us and it's sad. I am a melanated queen that knows my worth. But niggas don't want that because we are not queens to them. I, along with a few of my girls, are now looking into white and other races. <clears throat> we are fed the fuck up and ruined from our so-called black kings. Uh, ruined from all that our so-called black kings has done to us. I never thought of a pink... <laughs> I never thought of a pink penis. Pause. Until a little while ago. It's a shame that whitey as, as vicious as they are they know our worth why don't you not you kev i'm just saying this is the end of us this is the end of our black nation because i now see why people are dating out of their race niggas treat us like wet shit but the first white bitch walking down the street they marry her without getting to without getting the pussy but we bear their kids and they leave us for dead. I'm sorry, but I'm very passionate and tired. So forgive me, but please cover this. Thank you, and I appreciate your channel. <clears throat> now, there are a lot, agree or disagree, like it or not, men. I'm gonna talk to my men first. There are a lot of points in this email that I received that while I may not want to agree with them because I am known for caping for my fellow man because I have not yet and I continue to refuse to give up hope for my fellow men in love and in relationships. So I'm accused of caping for men even in situations where I probably shouldn't. But I can't disagree with the points that are made in this email. Hold on. gallon of water a day drink a gallon of water a day um <clears throat> men our black women have a point our sisters have a point our queens have a point now i have spoken i'm gonna address the conversations and the sentiments that i have gotten from my fellow black men throughout the years and recently because when i got this email I've reached back out to a few people who I have been speaking to organically over the years about this topic whenever it's come up. Just because I wanted to see if there'd be a difference as the years went by and how these men thought back then versus how they think now. Now that we're all in our mid thirties. <clears throat> and from the perspective of black men who have and these are black men who have actually voiced and have actually articulated that they do not and no longer and never want to date or deal with black women. And men who have said out of their own mouths that they only want to deal with white women and women from other races. And black women, I apologize because I agree. There is an issue here. There is a problem. I do see that problem. And while I don't have any issue at all with anybody from any race getting into an interracial relationship, choosing to love whoever they want to love, I have to admit, and I hope that this doesn't offend anyone, this is just my views as a black man in America, I do have to admit that I do feel a way. I don't disagree with it. I don't have hate for it. But I do feel a way when I see black women in relationships with white men I do is what it is um, and I'll get into why that is a little bit later so for my black men <clears throat> what I want to first do is clear up an issue and it, it's sad because 
there are black women who get grouped in with this scenario, grouped in with this assumption of black men that black men make. They get grouped in by default, and it's unfortunate. But I don't think, and from my conversations with uh, men that I've had, black men that I've had, I don't think the issue is black women, period. I think the issue is Americanized black women. You see, the number one thing that a man wants, any man, I don't care if that man is a black man, a white man, I don't care if that man is, is Chinese, it doesn't matter. Any man who is out there, again, too, it's another disclaimer, not talking about the men who don't have shit to offer in their relationships, not talking about the men who are less than, or the men who aren't about relationships or love or commitment or, you know, cultivating family and, 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 and doing right by the women that they choose to deal with. <clears throat> I'm strictly talking about the good men who are out there, the men who want family, but just choose outside of their race to, to build that family with. Those are the men I'm talking about. So those one-offs, those ain't shit niggas, I don't know why they do what they do only to say that they would probably do that regardless of who it was they were dealing with. Because I'm not cut from that cloth, I can't necessarily speak to the intentions and the reasons for why those types of men do what they do. But I don't think it's a black woman issue per se. I think it is an Americanized black woman issue. Because any man woman that they choose to be with they want naturally as a man they want that woman to be submissive and again and i've said it on this channel over and over again submissive does not mean less than we walk all over you treat us like you're a servant no submissive just means that you understand that the traditional role in a, a male female heterosexual relationship is that the man should take the lead in the relationship and that the woman should do all that she can um, to cater to, to be uh, accommodating, to be comforting, to take care of that man. So men incorrectly associate women who are strong-willed, who are independent, and who have been raised through struggle, similar to our struggle as black men in this country. <clears throat> And, who have, and black women who have been conditioned to not be so soft. We, men have incorrectly associated that with our black women not being submissive, our black women not being able to take care of us. Now, there are those out there who don't. There are those out there who don't want to keep a clean home for their man. There are black women out there who don't, you know, either can't, don't, or won't take care of home first and I don't care that we're in 2018 and not 1950 or 1975 I don't care when we're in 2055 naturally and traditionally this is what any man would want because as men especially black men I'm just gonna I'm just gonna focus on black men as black men in America, with all the shit that we have to deal with, as black men in America, with all of the pressures, when we walk out of our front door every day, before being a husband, before being a father or a boyfriend, before being a son, a brother, before being a best friend, before being an employee for whatever relation, uh, employer we work for, or even for those of us who own businesses, you know, and do our own thing to sustain ourselves, even before that, we are black men in America. And so when I walk out my front door every day, the hardest job I have, and you can look out on the news and see that I'm, this is real shit. The hardest job I have outside of raising my three kids, outside of being a husband, outside of my, you know, being the best employee I can be at my two full-time jobs, outside of me pursuing my career as a published author, outside of me in this platform and my podcast and whatever other ventures that I will embark on 
before my life on this earth ends, before I am anything, to the world I'm a black man. And even as hard as those jobs are, my hardest and number one job and responsibility after I leave my front door every day is to return back home at the end of my day, whenever that day should end. That is the hardest job right now for a black man. And we feel, and I will include myself in this, we feel <clears throat> that with all the pressures that we as black men have to deal with out in the world, from just simply driving down the street, going from one place to another, knowing full well, now more than ever, the possibility of us being pulled over and being the next accidental shooting by some poorly trained, socially awkward police officer who chose to escalate a situation that didn't need to be escalated. And any one of us, myself included, could easily be the next shot unarmed black man all over the news, all over somebody else's YouTube, all over social media for however many days or weeks or months until the next accident happens or until the next person doesn't comply with uh, having their civil rights infringed on. These things are important because these are the things that black men have to think about and deal with every day and more so than anything after all that has happened and after we still have to come home we want to be able to unwind we want to come home to a clean home we want to come home to a home that is warm welcoming and to a home where we don't feel like now we're going to be attacked again by the woman that we have at home now this is not <clears throat> an indictment on black women i'm just simply spewing the ideas and the sentiments that have been iterated and reiterated to me over the years and at some points that I have felt myself as it pertains to black women. Women, women, I should say. And black men feel like out of all the races of women, out of all the uh, ethnic and cultural backgrounds of different women <laughs> from different walks of life, <clears throat> that it is that we are least likely to get the support that we need to get the 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 catering that we need the submissiveness that we need the the the, the caring for that we need we feel like we are least likely to get that from black women that could be for a lot of reasons but i think and based on what i've heard <laughs> most of the black men who feel that way mm. were first exposed to single mothers because the majority of them grew up without a father. So single mothers who had to be super hard, who had to be super independent, who had to make so many sacrifices, even to the point of their own uh, love life and relationships. And so a lot of black men grew up being desensitized by even the needs of black women because if they grew up in a single parent home being raised only by their black mother to them they didn't see that she needed any of that stuff because all they saw was the con the the continual sacrifices that had to be made for them to be okay that's one perspective that's one point of view <clears throat> past that some of those same men and, and some of those same uh, uh, women who were raised by those single black mothers, those little girls who had brothers who heard those single mothers, whether it be just because of their bitterness or them being jaded or them wanting to simply protect their daughters from the same situation they found themselves in at that point. Us black men as, as little black boys, we heard these single black mothers, these women, telling, enforcing, and reinforcing, and instilling, and drilling into their daughters' heads, these young black girls who will grow up into being our black queens that this commenter talked about. We heard our single moms tell you over and over again how you don't need a man, how you can do everything by yourself, how you... Uh, how these, as this commenter put it, these niggas ain't shit. 
don't trust them. Don't, you know, do this. Don't do that. Don't sacrifice for them. Don't all these things that creates a conditioning and a pattern over time and and understood that it wasn't understood back then that it was pain causing those things to be said because hurt people hurt people and hurt people set up other people to hurt other people maybe not intentionally but just because you want to avoid seeing people you care about go through the same things that you had to go through yourself and so these daughters, these young black girls, grew up into black women who carry that attitude over. And again, this is not an absolute because I don't want somebody to comment and say, well, that's not everyone. I know that. But I'm speaking to the types of communities that this commenter talked about, like the Brooklyn, New Yorks, or the Patterson, New Jersey's where I'm from, or the Chicago's, you know, the hoods of this country. Those neighborhoods that had less than, those urban inner cities, where you saw, you know, an uh, overwhelming uh, epidemic of fathers not being present. Um, it's our generation, I think, the most, where this started to become a pandemic, but before that, it was an epidemic. Um, and so these young girls grew up, and because they had to be so strong, because they had to had to be so independent and because they felt like they didn't have that support and didn't have that help, that love that was still there, that ability to, to, to care for and nurture that was still there, it, it became calloused over. And so you see these black women out and about and it seemed like those men who I speak to who perpetuate this issue the most it seemed like it was those women that they were exposed to. It seemed like it was those women who they were around, who they saw as being loud, rather than seeing as just them being passionate. Or those black women who they saw as being ghetto, rather than just seeing those black women as being strong and defensive and, and, and you know, not wanting to be taken advantage of. So it's almost like a miscommunication. Because a lot of the black men, the the number one issue that they cite for why they don't date black women after the whole submissive thing is, oh, that they're loud, that they're ghetto, that they're, you know, and part of that blame goes to the fact that when you look out on TV today, you look out on the internet today, what's getting all the attention, what's getting all of the the airtime and the playtime are these loving hip hop. Atlanta wife type women who do act ratchet, who do act loud, and who do act super ghetto. And men see that and they're like, nah, I don't want that. And then you see that and then you see that it's coupled with the appearance of those same types of women being all about money and all about tangible things. And granted, that that's not the majority. But when that is all that is put out there, when that is what is glorified, it's, it's almost no wonder that these men are going to start to develop some kind of a conditioning in their thinking that says, avoid these women at all costs, because these networks don't do that to their own. They don't. Um, They do it to us. They do it to our black women. And granted, I'll also have to stipulate to the fact, too, that for so long, those same single mothers who taught their daughters that they don't need a man, that they don't, you know, they shouldn't trust men, that they can do it on their own, have to stipulate to the fact that those women were also left to be single mothers. Now, granted, there are things that went into that, ladies, black women. You know, there are drug laws that were ridiculously unethical at the very least. Nonviolent crimes that caused men who were out there for lack of education or lack of opportunity in inner cities who couldn't get the types of jobs that would allow them to take care of their families who may not have been eligible to go to school because of a lack of education and further that education. Um, who made choices to sell drugs or what have you. 
those men were taken out of the homes and sent to prison for years and decades on end. And the men who weren't, weren't necessarily taught how to be men or fathers or husbands or, you know, how to love and cultivate relationships because prior to the time when when crack cocaine started to flood all of our inner city streets, men were so busy fighting civil rights and trying to acquire rights that we should have all been afforded. There, you could find any reason, any excuse, any explanation throughout the timeline for why men have seemingly not been showing up for black women. And I would say that those are reasons and I would say that those are explanations, but I would say they're not excuses. But I will say that all behavior is learned. And I will say that this is also a two-way street. There's a point to be made for the men who say that the black women that they have dated, or the black men who say the black women that they dated, the black women who they tried to love, tried to be with, you know, they were just too hard. They just didn't have that bend. They just didn't have that submissive behavior that they need. And then you say, okay, well, what about black women? Because the commenter who sent me this email said that, you know, it seems like white men know our black queens worth more than us. Absolutely 100% false. The problem is, And I have seen this myself. And this is not to the commenter. And this is not to all black women. But please do not, if, you're go- if you are watching this and if you are thinking out loud as I'm talking, and if you plan to comment or have a conversation about this with your female friends or whoever, be honest, even if it's not you. Take a second and be reflective and think about the things that you have witnessed and observed throughout your years, however old or young you are. The same way that you will say that white men seem to see the worth of black women more than black men, that is because black women are far more respectful to white men than they are their so-called black kings. I have to point this out because it is true. I have dealt with situations myself in dealing with black women where I have seen them go out of their way to risk it all for white men go out of their way even to the point of their own personal safety for white men and I won't get into those situations right this second but it's kind of disgusting a little bit hold on fucking stressful topic bro um Let me ask y'all black women something. Let me ask you black queens something. For all of the things that you can cite for why we as black men, I'm going to include myself in this generalization because even though it's not me, I'm still a product of the community. Even though I chose to break the cycle, I'm still a byproduct of the community. For all the things that black that we have as black men have done to fail our black queens not be there as fathers not be supportive not be uh, I don't know financially capable of taking care of the household and you know all of these things and for us not seeing your worth and for us leaving the race to date white women and to date Spanish women and Asian women and whatever else How is it that we are all grouped in, even subconsciously, and that gripe is held, and that grudge is held against us as black men, and the the transgressions that we have made against you black women, how come those principles are upheld, and we are held to that? and not given a second chance 
for those of you who say you're fed up and you go to white women, white men. How is it that you think the answer is the same race of men who raped you, who enslaved your men during slavery, took your freedom, took your children, forced you to have their children, their mixed children. How is it that the white men who created slavery can be forgiven before black men who were victims of it can be forgiven for suffering from the conditioning of that victimhood? How come they can be forgiven first? See, this is a real part of the discussion that I don't hear talked about too much. I don't hear this discussion being had. Black men have done so much to betray black women. Black men have done so much to push black women away. But how is it that you run to the very men who, whose ancestors, whose, you know, fellow men in their community, whatever you want to call it, is the reason for why the problem started in the first place. Because this was all by design. During slavery, black men were stripped away from their black women, from their families. Husbands were taken from wives. This was done by design because it was understood that the only way to really break down a king, you, and you see the same thing in chess, this shit is for a reason, it's not by mistake. The only real way to weaken a king, the only real way to break down a king is to remove the queen from that board, is to remove the queen from that scenario. And so slavery, it was clearly understood and feared how strong black men were. So what better way to attack that than to remove that black king from his black queen? Because once you do that, everything else becomes easy. So we were taken from our black women separated for years if we ever at all got to you know become reconnected so after slavery ended after that many years 400 plus years you have to learn all over again you have to learn all over again how to be reacclimated to that which you have been stripped away from and I would imagine, of course, I wasn't around back then, but I would imagine that immediately following slavery and during the implementation of all of these Jim Crow laws and different things that came about to keep us in slavery, those same black women who at that point had been used to being raped by white men, at that point who had been so used to captivity that they just continued on in, in relationships with white men just because of what they were used to. Because that's the thing with, about slavery and physical bondage. After a while, the point is to attack your mind, is to brainwash you, and to make that captivity feel normal to the point where when those chains are released, you stay in captivity. And so maybe there was some resentment there also by the countless number of black women who were taken away from their husbands, raped in front of their husbands during slavery, and their husbands had to watch and couldn't do anything about it. Maybe there's some resentment that was there initially, and maybe that helped to perpetuate the cycle that, you know, bore roots into uh, separating the black families one from another, because you have to look at that because it started somewhere. And all throughout this country's dark and overcast history, there have been things put in place to keep the black men out of the home. And if you want to say, hey, you fell victim to it, whatever, it is what it is. I'm, I'm just laying the groundwork for what I believe started the epidemic that we now have. Because now, yes, we are at a crossroads. Black men, I think, are disproportionately dating outside of their race. And a recent study that I read kind of seems like women are heading in the same direction. Again, I don't have an issue with it. 
I do feel a way when I see my black women with any other race, really. But it really bothers me when I see black women with white women. Not bothers me in a sense of, yo, this is not right, this is not good. But it, it bothers me in a sense of, this is sad and this is interesting. Because there's nothing wrong. See, in this country, we focus so much on race as far as it having a negative uh, you know, connotation. Every other culture in the world, people stick with their own. There is nothing wrong with that. It's just like, you know, they say blood is thicker than water. You know, you, you're close, you know, you, you have your family, you live in your home with your family, and, you know, you may have friends and neighbors, but your family's your family. It's tribal. It's, 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 it's primal. There's nothing wrong with the black community saying, let's stick together, let's make, let's have kids together, let's grow old together, let's get into business together, let's marry each other, let's, there's nothing wrong with that. Let people do and be who they want to be and be with who they want to be with. But there is a problem. And there's a problem because it only seems that it's the black community more than every other community where we are abandoning each other when it comes to love to the point where you have to ask, and this commenter mentioned it, is our community going away? Are, are, are so many of us dating and marrying and reproducing outside of our race that we're going away? Is, is that not feasible or understood? And if it is, why is, that a, why is that not a problem? You know, I'm all for, I'm for black love. I'm for any kind of love. But not to the detriment of that community. Every community protects its own. The Jewish community protects their own. The LGBTQ community protect their own. The transgender community, which I see as being a part of but separate from the LGBTQ community as its own entity, they protect their own. Uh, the Mexicans protect their own. Hispanics protect their own. Everyone, but Native Americans protect their own. It seems like it's only the black community we have no interest in protecting our own. That part is true. I agree with that 100%. And while I may not agree with all of the reasons for why black men choose to forsake and abandon black women, I do see their frustration. I do. Every type of woman I have spoken to from every other race and culture that I have had, <clears throat> that I have been fortunate enough to meet and interact with from my being in the hospitality industry for 12 years and meeting people from all around the world. It is very clear that every other culture, every other ethnic background, every other race of woman, they are taught in some way, shape or form through their upbringing to cater to their men, to make their men feel loved, to value their men, to treat their men as kings. Now we as black men are called kings. We're referred to that way. But we're not treated by kings by our black as, as kings by our black women. We are not. And I'm not even just talking about the men who you black women say don't deserve it. The vast majority of us are not. The vast majority have to deal with drama. The vast majority have to deal with lying and cheating and all these things. And I'm not saying that these things are not perpetuated by other women from other races and cultures and ethnic backgrounds because of course it's not a uh, sole proprietorship of black women uh, drama and cheating and all that stuff of course it's not but at the very least i feel like predominantly every other race when that man is in the home it seems that those women as their first priority above anything else and after everything else is to make sure that family is okay. And in order to make sure family is okay, it's not just putting the kids first. It's not just making sure that they're okay. It's the whole family because they see everything is being connected. If my husband is okay, then, you know, my kids are okay If because their father is okay. And if their father is okay, then the kids are okay, then I'm okay because the kids are okay. And then we can be a happy circle.
there are so many different ways to tear apart and pick at this reality. But the truth is, is that it's a reality. And how do we fix it? If we can, how do we reconcile? Is there a way to reconcile? Because I, there's a part of, of a part of the issue too is there are certain women who are into white men and they don't seem to have a reason why or their reason is is trivial their reason might be oh because you know black men have better credit or they make more money or i mean white men or you know i want to have mixed babies or there's all types of reasons why people choose to stay outside of their race there really is but i think first and last i think if women are going to blame if black women are going to blame black men for this issue then I think black women should be open to the idea that there's there's blame on, on your side as well and I do hold my fellow black men responsible for this issue being an issue because I, I do see it it is an issue it definitely is and um, I mean I guess it comes down to should black men be expected to deal with a woman who is maybe rougher around the edges, maybe not as polished because they're not as as submissive or they're not as willing to cater to, you know, because no man wants to feel like they're in a relationship with another man. They want a woman. They want someone who's going to give. They want someone who's going to, um, you know, allow that man to lead the way that that man should. And of course, that requires capacity. So I'm not negating that fact. You know, if black men want to lead and want to be looked at as kings and leaders, they have to live that way and, and, and operate accordingly, 100%. But we've reached a point where it's, it's the cart or the horse first. Someone has to give, right? So, does, so do black men say, I'm going to push through all this shit all the hurt, the pain, the, the rough edges, the, 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 the aggressiveness, the, the loudness. I'm going to push through all that to see if I can get to a point where I can get this black woman to be what this white woman is already willing to be or what this Spanish woman is taught, raised, and bred to be. Or do black women say, you know what, if we want our kings to be kings and to treat us like queens, we need to stop acting like <laughs> bitches to them. Because, you know, I'm just talking freely. Um, may, I don't know which, which one has to give first. You know, if I believe that if, if we as black men got the same treatment from our black women, that white men get from their white women, that Spanish men get from their Spanish women, that Asian men get from their Asian women, if we as black men got that same type of treatment, if we as black men were catered to and taken care of that same way, I do believe it may take some time because of the pattern and the conditioning and the, 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 the normalcy now that has befallen our black community. But I do believe that the majority of black men would come around. I believe that they will. Because more than anything, it's we want to be taken care of we want to be in every way that it is a woman's responsibility to take care of a man we want that we just don't feel like as a whole we get it from our black women if we're if we as as men if we are black as black kings are responsible for you know providing for and protecting and making feel safe and all these things that the commenter mentioned in my email if we as black men are responsible for that to our black women then what are the things that our black women are responsible to us for? And are we getting those things? Honestly, be honest with yourself. We just talked about a lot of the reasons for why women feel slighted and for why black women feel they have to be stronger or harder or whatever creates the disconnect or perpetuates it. 
But now are you willing to acknowledge that those things also have an effect on us? Because if you're willing to acknowledge it, okay, then maybe we can find a medium and meet somewhere in the middle. But I think anybody who is not a part of this community, who may be watching this video, and anybody who's not privy to the deep-rooted pain from a first person's perspective, who may be watching this video, don't look at this as people being against interracial relationships. That's not what this video is about. That's not what this issue is about, because we have no issue with that. This commenter doesn't, and neither do I. The issue is there's a problem within our community, and we're not protecting our community and ensuring the longevity and the continued prosperity of the black community. If we continue to do things the way that we've been doing things, there's going to come a point where there will be no more black community and it should be protected. It needs to be protected. And if there's anything that I can do, if there's anything that I can say as a, as a, as a medium to other black men I know and come across, if there's any way that I can pick their brain to find out exactly why and what it is, I would love to do that. But, you know, after all those issues that I just mentioned, which I think are all legitimate issues, they're all legitimate catalysts into why black men and black women alike have chosen to stray outside of their race for dating and for family and marriage and all these different things. While those things all have valid points, at the end of the day, you don't know what that trigger is. I don't know what that trigger is. I have female friends who are white who have black husbands. I have, I know, you know, black women who are with white men. I know black women who cheat on their black husbands with white men. I know, I've, I've seen it from every angle. And who the fuck knows why? people make those decisions what the actual trigger is I think there is some truth to a lot but not all of the black men who do make the decision to deal, deal with white women at a certain point comes down to maybe they can't handle that strength maybe they can't handle the, the fact that the woman that they're with is that independent or they're not able to see that as being a quality and so they see it as being a negative I don't know what I do know though is white men do not value our black women more than us because by nature they can never understand the struggle of black women the way that black men can I, this part is not debatable I don't care who agrees with that or who doesn't that's just a fact that's just a fact your own people, your own culture, your own eth eth ethnicity, uh, you know, will always and above any other outside <laughs> community will always understand your struggle because they were a part of it and vice versa. A black woman who dates or who marries a white man will never have to, will always have to teach and enlighten that white man to those struggles right you will never have to enlighten me or teach me about your struggle because your struggle is our struggle so that's the only part that i would say for black women who feel like white men see see your worth more than black men i don't believe that that, that, that that's impossible I, I won't even say i don't believe that that's true it's not possible i think though for white men there's a fascination there and not just for into black women, but Spanish women as well. I mean, there is so much more style and flavor and um, character and liveliness that just everybody in the world wants to be us in some way, shape, or form. Because it's it's just I don't know. There's an interest there for some reason, and those of and those who who can't be want to be with that's the next best thing i mean you see it all over the world you see you know white women who go tanning or people who have fairer skin who go tanning 
to make their skin uh, darker. Um, you see all these women now who want braids and dreads and, and they want, our culture is so fascinating. It is, it just naturally is. But don't mistake and don't confuse fascination and interest and curiosity with knowing worth. That's a whole different thing. Knowing someone's worth, truly knowing someone's worth is inconsequential. That's not something that is planned. That's not something that you stumble on. That's something that happens over time. That's something that is branded into you. We as black men know the worth of our black women because we were there for the whole thing. Now, if you say that white men are treating black women better than black men, I would say to that, maybe it's who you're exposing yourself to. Maybe it's who you've been around. Maybe it's the, it's the platforms that you're using to meet these different men. Because for every black man who, who ain't about shit, there's a black man somewhere who is. But it's about opening your mind and, ex- and exposing yourself to those men and being willing and being able to see those men as viable for you to want to be in a relationship with them. Because you can't have it both ways. You can't have it all. You can have, you can't have, you can't always have a black man who knows your worth, who treats you like a queen, who uh, is, is, is going to be all those things, is going to be able to protect you and have that strength, still have that, that, that street edge that you women know you need and like that that those of us men who have it have it you're not going to find someone who has all of that so find a happy medium somewhere if you can't meet a decent man in in i don't know fucking in the club or at the bar go to the grocery store i don't know meet meet a man at church or somewhere like that it always seems like the only viable ones left are the ones who are taken. And even those who are taken are probably suffering in their relationship in silence anyway. But I would just say that if, to my comment, to, to my, the person who emailed me, if you were really to the point, as you put it, of pink penis, uh, shit, uh, I don't know why you would be, but if that is the point that you really find yourself at, I would say you owe it to yourself to explore it, but if you are as passionate as you say about us black men, uh, us being black kings, then why give up on that? See, that's the thing. I feel like we equally, black men and black women, the entire black community, we give up on each other too quickly. Too quickly. We do. We give up on each other far too quickly. Fuck all the dumb shit. Like, let's just get to a place where we can understand each other. If you meet someone who seems like they're a good person for you, who seems decent, fuck whatever baggage, fuck whatever issues you had in your past. Make that man feel welcome. Black women, if you want black men to come around when you meet someone who's halfway decent, rather than in your head feel like he's just like the rest, Cater to that man. Take care of that man. Take care of your home. Make that man feel like he is important. Don't make that man feel like you're just waiting for him to fuck up. And vice versa. Black men. Men in general. Don't let the fucked up women who lie, who cheat, who have kids by all these different men, who don't have respect for you, who will put your life and theirs in danger, who don't think twice about family or commitment until it's convenient for them. Don't let those fucked up women ruin it for you, for the women who truly are about seeing you be your best you. And black men too. This is important. I'll close with this for you black men. Stop associating black women being hard on you, wanting to see you do better, wanting to see you be your best self, not wanting to, to be accommodating of you failing 
and being less than yourself and not getting out there and doing all that you can to better yourself. Stop associating that with them wanting to control you and stop associating that with black women wanting to be or treat you like you, you, they're your mother or all the other complaints that I hear you black men make. Any good woman should want to push you to be the best man you can be. Any good woman, on top of you wanting them to take care of home, to make sure, you know, dinner's ready and the house is clean, all those things that we men just want to have. Any good woman is also responsible to her man to make him feel like I'm there for you if you fail, if you fall short, but at the same time, I'm not going to allow you to sit on your ass and not do anything. And that's a big problem that I see and know that black men have with black women. Black women don't want another child. They want a man. So before you complain about the things that black women won't do, ask yourself, are you a man who handles your responsibilities? I know that I am. So I know that I deserve for any woman I'm with to cater to me because I know what I bring to that situation. So I can truly feel frustrated that the only women in my life I've ever found who are that catering and accommodating, unfortunately, have been outside of the black community. It's unfortunate. I wish that it wasn't true, but it is. But yet I have not given up. You know, I am married to a black woman. And despite whatever issues, despite whatever pitfalls, I cannot give up on a whole community because of one or the few who didn't see my worth. Because before you can see the worth of a black man or a black woman, you first have to be able to see the worth in a man and a woman. That's what I think we struggle with more. Let's learn how to see the worth in each other as individuals even being on opposite ends of the gender spectrum. Let's take care of that first. And then let's work on building up our community. Anyway, um, I hope that I've touched on at least some of the, the main concerns that, that you had in, in the email that you sent me to that, to that person. Um, you asked me not to make this a one and done thing so I will brainstorm to see if there's a series or something that I can start where I can continue to address these types of issues. And I'm going to continue to have discussions and conversations with people who find themselves dealing with these types of, of, of things. And I will continue to bring these types of things to this channel um, because I, there's no type of topic that I would avoid. Um, I just hope, you know, with this blog being concentrated toward black love, black men, black women, and dating outside of the black community. I hope that it hasn't offended anyone not a part of the black community because, again, this is one of those things where it's like, <clears throat> you know, like you, you, you go over to your friend's house and, you know, they're having a family meeting and they're discussing something that's within the family. This is an internal issue. All right, to all my white people, my Spanish people, I got love for all y'all. There's, it's never in question with me. But this is an internal issue. And this is an internal issue that has to be dealt with internally. It does. We have to, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with white men. We're not saying there's anything wrong with white women or Spanish men and women or, or Asian men and women or whoever. But this is just an internal issue. Right? I had to have a talk with my black sister because my black sister emailed me and said, yo, black brother, what's going on? So this is an internal conversation being had on my platform so that other people in our community can come to the table because I want to know more about why this issue has become such an issue and how many other black women feel this way because increasingly when I go out in my everyday life and me being a hospitality I see people from all over and it's becoming increasingly more common to see black men and black men with white women and white men with black women it's becoming increasingly more common and it is although an internal issue it is very interesting and I think we all can contribute in one way, shape, or form to it. So, I apologize for this blog being so long, but I, I definitely had to sit down 
and speak to my black women, my black sisters, my black queens. I had to because this was important. And I don't usually sit this long, 48 hours. I don't usually sit this long with a topic or a subject matter. Once something pops into my head or once someone hits me up and says, yo, can you talk about this? I usually get right to it. I really wanted to sit with this because I really wanted to take my time to make sure that I communicated what I wanted to say the right way. But also, I needed to equally and fairly address both sides because this is not just a black men issue. Because our black women are doing some things too that we don't agree with having agreed with. So that part needed to be addressed as well. So, having said all that, um, after this heavy ass topic, I'm gonna go take a fucking nap. I don't pretend to know everything, I just know what I know. Please like, comment, and subscribe for all my black women in your friends and sir, in your circles of female friends. Watch this video with them, get an insight into how we black men think because I am kind of the doorway into that. I, I give away a lot of trade secrets in the in the not just the the not just among men but black men and maybe I haven't been okay to do that but I chose to do that on this platform because someone needs to bring us all together and there are some things that go on that gender the, the opposite gender doesn't understand doesn't get if you have a question ask me I will get the answer some way, in some way, shape, or form. So watch this video with your other female friends in your circles. Have the discussion with them. See how serious this issue really is and if we really are to a point of no return. And let me know, because I would like to know. Like, share this video, comment on this video, subscribe to this channel. Stick around for a while because these are the types of issues that are covered. These are the types of topics that are discussed. And it's all in the interest of love and fairness tough love tough love definitely and fairness and i'm just i don't know i'm just one part of a of a of a community of black men trying to figure this shit out and i hold my black men accountable as well but i also hold my women accountable also so let me know what y'all think about this one and i'll see you on the next one peace and love